Florida last Wednesday in the ACC SEC Challenge. Officials tonight Roger Ayers, Burt Smith, and Courtney Green. Deeks control the opening tip. It is Boopy Miller, one of four players who averaged 16 plus for Wake Forest, the only team in the nation that can say that. This Rutgers team last year did a really good job of shutting down Lake Forest. And what Rutgers does well defensively, it takes away what you like to do. Their preparation is one of the key things in their defensive success. No Efton Reed in the starting lineup for Wake. For Rutgers, they don't have a single player who averages 12 a game. It's a balanced scoring effort as they turn it over. Andre Hyatt, the team's leading scorer. Gavin Griffiths, the freshman, Makes his second start. Coach, they see Griffiths as someone who could potentially be a 15-point-per-game player as you look at the starting lineups for Wake. Reed will come off the bench. Zach Keller getting the start at center. Carr coming off a big game last time out against Florida with 22. Yeah, I, one of the things that Rutgers really does is they scout you very well and try to take away a lot of the things you like to do in your sets. And they do it with their full-court pressure. That's a basket by Keller. Wake in its last game. Only got seven points from players outside of the big four of Miller, Hildreth, Salas, and Carr. Hyatt on the drive. Got tied up. We get a held ball call. Possession arrow to Rutgers. One of the things Rutgers would do offensively, they like, really like to space the floor, and they like to dribble drive you. That's going to be tough against Wake because Wake really plays the gaps. You saw Hildreth right there and that gap taking that away. Griffiths three, no good. Rebounded by Carr. Miller can push. Salas lines up a three and knocks it down. That's what Wake likes to do. They like to get out. They like to run. They like their transition. They need their transition to really work well for them tonight. They don't want to get into a half-court fight with this Rutgers team. Hyatt from the outside. And right now, for Steve Peichel's Rutgers team, Coach, defense is ahead of the offense. The offense has been inconsistent through the early season. Well, Peichel's team, most of the time, they are, the defense is a little bit ahead because that's what he lives off of so well and he does a great job defensively in the preparation and the guys understanding their concepts right, you look at what rutgers has done defensively this year among the best in the country in several categories last year it was the top defense in the big 10 and wake has an offense that can score with anybody noah fernandez stepped out of bounds the transfer from umass I don't understand why these why players don't understand what an out of bounds line is. That is happening at least a lot more this year than ever before. A few years ago, when they moved the arc back, we saw it a lot in the corner. Yeah, everybody's tried to, to for the spacing so that they can get dribble penetration. Hildreth catch and release too strong, and the rebound to Rutgers. Scarlet Knights struggled on the defensive glass last time out. Griffiths, the baseline drive, he turns it over. There comes Wade the other way. Hildreth so good off the bounce, gets the two. It's going to be important for Wake Forest not to turn the basketball over. They don't want to do anything to throw fuel on the fire with Wake Forest transition offense. Fernandez no good, a rebound by Hildreth. He had 18 and 6 last time against Florida. Working on the freshman Griffiths, a good defense there by Gavin Griffiths. Hilbert is that guy, guy that does a little bit of everything. He can drive it, he can knock down the three, but the biggest thing he does is he gets the other players involved. There is Efton <laughs> Reed. You heard the applause in the background. The much ballyhooed transfer from Gonzaga. Steve Forbes told me last week, Coach, he raises the ceiling for the entire season and for this entire team as Boopy Miller knocks it down. Well, Coach Forbes is really excited about getting him uh, and being a part of this ball club for what he adds, not just on the court, but off the court, too, with his leadership.
You know, one of the things I would tell you, when you get smacked the year before, and Rutgers really did a great job defensively against this Wake Forest team, you remember that. And I'm sure coming into this game, Wake Forest has worked on some specific things to take advantage of their scoring opportunities. Wake off to a sizzling start. Steve Puzzle wants a timeout. Another three by Boopy Miller. Wake five of six from the field. Three of four from beyond the arc. Efton Reed has checked in. And Cam Hildreth never checked out. Third meeting all time between Rutgers and Wake Forest. And when these two played last year, it was not much of a contest. Rutgers winning in a blowout fashion over at Jersey Mike's Serena, AKA what was formerly known as the Rack. from Austin Williams. Rutgers eight possessions, one for four from the field with four turnovers. Miller's had the hot hand early. Reed tips it back. Okay. Rutgers has not been able to set up its press defensively. Fernandez contested shot. Reed with his first rebound as a Demon Deacon. One of the things Wake Forest is doing though in their secondary break, they're really trying to space the floor to give themselves some driving lanes and also be able to pass the ball inside. You yeah, saw the pass there by Reed, who's also a terrific passer in the low post and high post. And that went off of the knee of Carr. It goes to Rutgers. One of the things Rutgers did last year, they really worked hard to take Carr away and not allow him to have a lot of looks. Because that young man is a very, very fine shooter. Well, they changed the call, so it went off of Rutgers. And it goes back to Wake underneath. Coach Forbes is really good at setting up out-of-bounds plays. And he likes to set up some things where they can take advantage right away of a quick basket. It's almost like a special situation in football. Instead of turnover, three on two for Rutgers. And Wade getting back in defensive transition. The miss from the outside, rebound corralled by the Scarlet Knights, and they almost turn it over. That's one of the things Wake Forest is really going to have to do. They're going to have to hold their own on the glass because if they don't do that, that Rutgers is going to be able to score in transition. They're going to be able to score uh, offensive rebounding, and especially kicking out and trying to knock down a couple threes. Here comes Williams, drive and dish, almost lost it. That's the one they call J. Mike, J. Michael Davis. Simpson, long three. And Coach, right now, Rutgers just not getting good shots. Well, they have it. The ball has not touched the paint. It's very difficult to be consistent offensively if the ball does not get into the paint area. It's called to collapse. Reed and his first basket as a late for Stephen Deacon and a chance for a three-point play. And it came off of Hildreth. And that's the thing I'm talking about Hildreth does so well, is that he gets other people involved. There you see him. Beautiful pass right there. Reed used his body to protect the ball and was able to get a, a potential three-point play. So Reed goes to the free throw line. Junior originally from Richmond, Virginia. 
Started his career at LSU, then Gonzaga, and Hunter Salas, both former Zags on his team. The free throw good. And uh, as good as these guards have been, Miller, Hilton, Salas. I know cars are stretch four. Reed gives you that true seven footer who can do so much from the low post. And he, and he keeps the defense honest. Um, because you can't load up with only one person because he, you have to be able to guard him because he can post you at any point in time. I really like the spacing this Wake Forest team is playing with right now. The spacing and the pace of the game. Wake six of nine from the field. Parker Fredrickson, 20 and gold, the freshman of the game. Hilton found a drive, a nice floater. It's a 13 0 run for the Beaton Beacons. You don't do that very often against this Rutgers defense, I'm telling you, because they do a really good job of plugging the gaps and not giving you driving lanes. Wolfhook denied at the rim, but we get a foul. Yeah, Wolfhook gives Rutgers a physical presence inside. He's really good on the offensive glass. Played football a lot in high school. A lot of people thought he was going to go to school on a football scholarship, but he gives them some physicality down there that is really necessary, especially in the Big Ten. You just saw Steve Forbes, and well, we mentioned with Reed coming back today, the other reinforcement he's hoping he'll have back it may be a month or so is Damari Monsanto. Coach, Monsanto had the knee injury last year in the game against NC State. He's one of the best shooters in the ACC. They're hoping late December, early January is the timetable. I tell you what, that's going to be scary for the ACC because he can flat out shoot it. And adding the pieces that they added with Salas coming over, he can really handle the ball. You see him initiating there. They're going to be an awful tough offensively to be able to handle. And Steve Ford just does a tremendous job. Junior college coach, paid his dues. He's, he's the basketball lifer. Uh, he just a joy to be around. Rebound tracked down by Popquist, the Swede. Well, Simpson really came on to at the end of last year for Rutgers. He was a freshman a season ago. Popquist, the lefty from the corner. That was a good shot by Popquist, but again, the ball never touched the paint. That's an awful tough way to live, trying to be able to score without the ball getting in the paint, either on a drive or a pass. First field goal in about five and a half minutes for Rutgers as the teardrop falls for Hildred. Again, standing on the perimeter, Griffiths contested, and the rebound of Fredrickson. Salas. He does a defense. great job. He does a great job of breaking down the defense. He's the best one-on-one -on -one player on that Wake Forest team. And whenever they need a basket, they run some action to get him on a clear out or he can dribble drive it. Everything staying on the perimeter for Rutgers as Popquist knocks down a three. His third and fourth threes of the season coming in this sequence. At least they have just, but Rutgers is not even really looking to go inside as of right now. They're just really being content with moving the ball on the perimeter. And I don't know if it's something that they saw in the scouting report that, that they feel like that's the best way to attack this way for our team or what. Sal is freed up by the swing from Lee. It belongs to Rutgers. Wake up by 11. And the Efton Reed era has officially started. And one for the big fella. With you on a Wednesday night. Coming up after us, we send you to Little John. Second game of our doubleheader, undefeated. Number 24, Clemson, hosting South Carolina. The SEC ACC Challenge, or the ACC SEC Challenge, whatever you want to call it, it's over. But little Palmetto State rivalry follows us here on ACCN.
and, and that and that one will be a good one. I, South Carolina is uh, is undefeated, and Clemson is playing some of the best basketball in the ACC right now. Great win over Clemson. There. This is a team that looks very connected, and obviously in PJ Hall, they've got one of the best bigs in the ACC. Wake has done a really good job defensively so far, recognizing some of the things Rutgers is trying to do. They've taken away their inside game and made them a, basically a jump shooting team so far. Five turnovers now for Rutgers to just three field goals. And offense has been a struggle at times for Rutgers this year. They have been winning games on the strength of their defense. And coaches said at least that a lot of times they get frustrated when they're not when they don't score uh, after playing really good defense and they, and they have breakdowns with that. So that's one of the things he's really working with them doing, concentrating and staying focused offensively, and it'll click. Pop Quist picked up the foul, his first, team second. Right now for Rutgers. Keller back in there is Reed headed to the bench. Long three, Boopy Miller, no. And we're going to get a foul on Rutgers underneath. Yeah, Griffin just flat pushed one of the Wake Forest players in front of him. He'll learn that he's not going to be able to get away with that. That's just a flat push. That young man has a bright future now. Hildreth off the catch and shoot. Coach Forbes is noted for his out-of-bounds plays, getting a quick basket off those out-of-bounds sets. High back and downhill. Drip Keller comes over to help. Drip went to the baseline. And I don't know where that was going. Yeah, watch this. This is a set play. It's just a back screen right there. Hildreth comes off of it, gets the lob, and scores it. But, you know, right now, I think Rutgers has to kind of settle down and figure out some other ways to attack this Wake Forest defense. I think they've got to get the ball inside, either dribble drives or throwing into the low post. And this is the Rutgers press. They like to pick up teams full court. They haven't shot it well early. They've turned it over, which makes it hard to set up a big component of their defense. Salas looking for help. Marion cannot connect. And is the other way. The basket does not count. Fall down the floor. Fernandez really likes to attack the basket. He's probably the best in transition. And he's the guy that kind of ignites them and gets them running. Began his career at Wichita State. Then UMass, where he was one of the top guards in the A-10. And now at Rutgers, Massachusetts native. Hyatt, leading score for Rutgers. Now they're playing through the post a little bit. Omori goes to that little hook. Offensive rebound, Pop was too strong. And we get a tie-up, another held ball. Possession out of the Rutgers. But they got two really good looks on that possession. Probably, and, and that makes it much more effective. They see Omori right there. And then, because he's got the basketball, he gets attention, which creates weak side offensive rebounding opportunities. It's Wake who had the possession arrow. Miller using the Keller screen. Dips under, and he's got eight. You know, a lot of the coaches talk about 
and we talked about at the top, those four guys scoring a lot of points for weight. I don't necessarily see anything bad with that. I think all four of those guys can score a lot of points no matter where they play because they're capable offensive uh, players. And it just makes this weight offense uh, really, really difficult to guard, especially in transition. Look at the speed of Booty Miller, and he's able to get the foul call. And one of the things Rutgers is known for is their transition defense. They do not give up a lot of transition points. The two things they do is don't give up a lot of transition points and not put guys on the foul line. Coach really harps on that a tremendous amount of time, and uh, they just have not been as effective defensively today as they normally are. Keller knocks down the open three, and that's, to your point, it's got to be on the scouting report. He can knock down that shot. And again, that's a Rutgers strength is understanding scouting reports and taking away a lot of the things you like to do. A well-traveled Austin Williams. He's on his fourth team. And he gets the two. Started at Marist, two years there, three seasons at Hartford. Did not play last year at FIU. You know, Miller coming into this Wake Forest team has really, the team has really taken to him. He's been the quarterback and the leader. Although they've got other guys, Hildreth uh, can play some points, but they've worked better than Miller got the point. Central Michigan transfer, Boopy Miller, led the Chippewas in scoring as a freshman, and this time he just rips <laughs> it away and then gets tangled up. Wake Forest, building off that Florida win, has come out hot, shooting 60% from the field. Born in the wild. Rare. Off the court for Rutgers tonight. They get a commitment from Dylan Harper, the number two player in the ESPN 100. He's the younger brother of former Rutgers star Ron Harper Jr., and coach, right now, Rutgers has two of the top three recruits in the country committed to play in Piscataway. This is a historic recruiting class for Rutgers. Best in program history. Right now, looking at a top five class, Ace Bailey is the number three player. When you look at the history of this program, it speaks volumes to what Steve Peichel has built in his eight seasons with Rutgers. Well, without question, and, you know, I've seen Coach on the recruiting trails in the summer. He's got a great staff there, and uh, all you got to do is go to his, uh, the rack, and uh, that place is jumping, and uh, it's a very difficult place to play, and uh, I know they're really excited about this recruiting class of Rutgers. Those guys are still a year away from joining right now. Rutgers looking to dent a 16-point deficit. There's Reed, left it short. Remember, Rutgers last time out got into a big hole against Illinois. Got close when halftime showed up, but could not quite complete the comeback. Illinois pulled away in the second half. Omori banging with Reed and gets the jump hook to go. See, but, you know, you can't wait to the six-minute mark to go to Amore. I mean, I just think that even if he doesn't shoot the basketball, he creates attention defensively that you can get help and get other people open shots. And Wake just went right inside. I mean, it, it's just, you have to get the ball in the low post. Five points now for Reed. His first game of the season. Fernandez, jab step. And nicely done. He knocks it down for Rutgers. His first field goal. Wake is learning to play with Reed pretty easy. And, I, and he's not going to open up call. Yeah. It's going to open up a lot for this offense, which is dangerous given what they've done without him offensively. Reed against Omori didn't really have much of an angle and that's one of the best defensive post players in the Big Ten. Without question he was, a, he was very much off balance on that shot. Hyatt posting up. Reed came to help. Hernandez so quick off the bounce he's got for. See that's what I like and that's the way Rutgers plays. 
You see, Fernandez, I mean, he, he didn't settle for the jump shot. He got the ball in the paint. You make the defense collapse. You get a chance to go to the foul line. That's the type of pressure you have to put on people defensively, especially on the road. Hill trip over to Miller. Weak side rebound by Carr, and he gets tied up. Carr has really improved. Uh, he's become much more of a physical player, I think, this year. I saw him in Charleston, uh, and he really played well there. And they've asked him, especially early, without Reed, to play the five quite a bit. He's really a stretch four by trade, but shows he can bang down low. I tell you, with he and Reed, they're going to have two formidable post guys that are going to be difficult to guard. Because both of them can step away. Both of them now are playing pretty physical in the face. Little heat check from Fernandez. Rutgers have made four straight. for Murray. And that's going to be a trap. You know, I, I think he anticipated the contact instead of catching the ball more and find the defense and then scoring. Watch Carr right there. See the physicality? You know, he creates his space. Yeah. Coach, they're letting him play. It's like the old Big East. I wouldn't go that far back now. <laughs> but they, <laughs> that, that was a, I coached in that old Big East. Now, that, that, that was a different animal. But they are, they are allowing him to play. And the only thing coaches ask for is consistency. And the, this officiating crew has been consistent. Salas draws the foul. The Gonzaga transfer. They hope he can be their next impact guard. They had Alondis Williams coming over from Oklahoma. Was ACC Player of the Year. Tyree Appleby last year from Florida. Led the league in scoring. We remind you, Sunday, women's basketball doubleheader here on ACCN. First at noon. Florida Gulf Coast and Duke, followed by Kentucky and number 18, Louisville. Well, Wake Forest has come out this first half and has let Rutgers know that they're not going to shut them down like they did last year. I'm telling you, when you take it, when you take a loss like that, that sits with you for a while. Players don't forget, coaches don't forget. And this Wake Forest team has come out and played with a lot of purpose. And coach, you would have to think if you saw the video that Wake Forest posted, that was an emotional moment when Efton Reed was granted his eligibility for the NCAA. There's got to be a domino effect on that for the other guys on the roster. Oh, without question, because he practices with them and they see what he can do day to day and they know he adds a certain, not just, and again, the coaches constantly say, it's not just his, his basketball, it's his leadership, it's the understanding of the game, it's being a good teammate, and those things just make this great Forest team better. Miller from the baseline had his shot blocked. The Rutgers starting to heat up. They have made five of the last six. But Wake still leads by a dozen. Say you're looking for the perfect present. You might try looking at the perfect. The waiver he needed is a two-time transfer from the NCAA and Steve Forbes announcing it to the rest of the team. We were just talking about that. When you have a player with his skill set and his potential, the guys know what he adds. Boy, that can lift an entire team. And we've seen that early in this half. Well, we have, but also this way for our team is a team of building culture. And Wake Forest team is very close. Steve Forbes has done a great job. And so it meant a lot to them for as much work as he's put in to be able to play. Nice play there by Carr. Another terrific inbounds play call by Steve Forbes to beat the shot clock. Hyatt hits another three. He's got nine, all three of his field goals from deep. You know, he's a streaky shooter. And when he gets hot, it really changes the dynamic of this Rutgers offense. And this is a very important time for 
uh, Wake Forest because they played a really good first half. They really want to go in the halftime with a working margin and not let Rutgers crawl back in this thing too close. Salas on the drive, tied up, and he's going to draw the foul. It's on Simpson, who's first. And that's one of the things Rutgers does defensively. They really come over weak side help and shut down driving lane. They don't give you a free run at the basket. Every shot at the basket is challenged. Part of me, that's actually Simpson's second foul, so he heads to the bench. Has not scored yet. Entry pass to Reed against Omori, who had eight blocks left last time out. And Omori just picked up his second foul. Reed is very physical. Omori does not like the, the, the physicality. He's telling the referees that he's the guy banging me, not me banging him. And that's what Pike was saying. <laughs> It's funny to see big guys go at each other now. It's a throwback. You just don't see it in basketball like you used to. Well, yo, know, Reed hasn't played in a while, so he's anxious to get on the board. ACC PM with Mark Packer, Taylor Tannenbaum. Weekdays from Mark's Charlotte studio in his basement. It's at 4 Eastern. We'll keep talking about the college football playoff, all things ACC right here on ACC. And Taylor's a Florida State alum, so I'm sure she's got a lot to say these days. Here's Fernandez. He's made some nice plays at the controls for Rutgers. Hyatt's got nine to lead the Scarlet Knights. Driving baseline, throws it up, give him 11 to lead all scores. Hyatt has really had a hot hand, but he's been very aggressive. Whenever he's gotten the basketball, he looked to penetrate and try to create scoring opportunities. Rutgers within 10. Wake's largest lead was 18. Drive and kick. Hildreth gets space. Left it short. Offensive rebound. Reed. No good. It's knocked out of bounds. Last touch Rutgers with Marion going for the rebound. You know, it's funny how one guy can change the dynamic of the team. Reed coming into the game has made Wake Forest much more physical as a basketball team. Boopy Miller follows his miss and turns it over. High up ahead. No good by Davis. Wolfel in for two on the Rutgers. It gets to within single digits. 108 to go. First half. Timeout. 37 29. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Blue Buffalo, huh? Yeah, Purina one. Yeah. I used to feed Purina one, but then I read the ingredients. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's right there. Chicken, rice flour, corn gluten meal, whole grain corn chicken byproduct meal. What's in blue? Deboned chicken, chicken meal, brown rice, barley, oatmeal. Yeah, but those ingredients cost a lot more. Blue is only about 50 cents more a day. That's not too much for my Chester. With Perry Clark and East Schwab, coach, what has allowed Rutgers to get back in this game? Attacking the basket. Uh, they changed their philosophy early. About the first 10 minutes, they were settling for perimeter shots. Uh, after that, they really started getting the ball into a low post. They started driving the ball more, and they became much more aggressive, and it's allowed them to get back in this basketball game. Rutgers has made four of its last five field goals. They're on an 18 to 8 run. Wake led by as many as 18 and a half. Hildreth using the read screen. He can knock that down. Not this time. Rebound Wolfram. Fernandez got that great first step. 
Wolf look over Reed. Baseline J is good. And it's a two-possession game with 30 seconds to go in the half. Wolf has really stepped up, both rebounding the basketball and creating some low post presence. And that is to help to change the flow of this basketball game. Hildred off the bounce, kicks the read. That doesn't go. Marion the follow, and it belongs to Wake. Three and a half seconds to go on the game clock. Wake has played a really good first half, but I know a Coach Gores would wish that they were maybe a little bit further ahead because they have really played well and have pretty much controlled this first half. Final ticks. Reed's going to have to put it up. He does. And it doesn't go. Wake got off to it. And look for Rutgers to try to attack like they did at the end of the first half. Griffiths, the freshman with the three, and the rebound corralled by Reed. Salas, no. Reed was looking for the putback. Instead, out of bounds. You know, it's interesting now. Wake is learning to play with two legitimate big guys. And that's yes, no are. disrespect to the other guys that were playing there. But, you know, Reed just gives a different dimension, both with his physicality and his size. So, you know, with he and Carr, you've got two legit big guys that can play inside and outside. The hustle by Boopy Miller forcing the turnover. And coach, it's one thing to do that in practice. It's another when you do it against live competition for the first time. Oh, w without question. I mean, and uh, it's interesting because I, I really think that this Wake Forest team offensively has a lot of weapons. Shot clock winding down. Hildreth contested. Too strong. Tipped out. Here's Miller on the drive. It rolls in. He's got 10. Rutgers doesn't give up a lot of uh, offensive rebounds. Omori took position down low and puts it in over Carr. It's almost been like Omori, they haven't really found him in this game. They haven't figured out how to utilize him in this game like they do a lot of times in their other games. Um, they haven't really hit him in a lot of pick and rolls. They haven't really tried to torture him in the low post. Reed for three. That's the one thing that hasn't worked for him. He goes for three from deep. Simpson with the two fouls in that first half with a nice move to the 10. And Rutgers down by as many as 18 at one point. Now within four. First basket for Simpson. Salas, the team's leading scorer, 19 a game. Driving on the true sophomore Simpson. Out balance, and that's what makes him such a tough player to guard. He really is, but Rutgers has done a pretty good job of shutting him down. And when you're one of the leading defensive teams in this country, you have a, the ability to take certain things away. And they've taken Salas away. Hyatt gets bailed out by the foul. He'll get Hildreth his first. Big time drive right there. And again, we talk about attacking the basket. And they, that's what you like to see. Uh, that kind of play out of Silas, because that's what he's able to do. You clear side, you let him go one-on-one, -on -one, and normally good things happen to you. Andre Hyatt at the free throw line for Rutgers, 50 years senior. Team's leading scorer, one of the tri-captains, and tonight he's busted out of the shooting slump. He's got 12 on the night.
four of five from the field. He was just five of 22 last two games. He's three of four from deep and had come in hitting just three of his last 14 from downtown. You know, this game is really, I think, important to Wake Forest because this would be a quality win against a quality opponent, a team that probably will be in postseason play. And it will not only help Wake Forest, it will help the league. Reed missed the lefty hook, now sets the screen for Salas. Salas off balance. Reed may have gotten his way. Here comes Simpson. Raptors can make it a one possession game. Simpson from the elbow. 41 38. And he has really gotten hot. Uh, they have tremendous hopes for this young man. When he, he him coming in, they think he can be one of the most prolific scores that they've had there at Rutgers in a while, and he's really stepped up tonight. Boopy Miller able to draw the foul. If that's all Mori, that's going to be number three. They get Griffiths. It's his second. You know, Amori has just not really gotten in the flow of this game. I think um, the physicality that's been played in that low post with the banging and all like that has kind of limited some of his offensive opportunities. And with both Carr and Reed, it's taken away from his ability to dominate on the glass. I'm sorry. I was going to say, Omori's an old school player in the sense that this is a kid who turned down opportunities in the offseason to go elsewhere, even go pro. And, Coach, you don't hear this too often. The reason he came back for his fourth year at Rutgers was to graduate with a degree. And I wish you hear more of that. Because that's an important part of college. He's a Dean's List student, majoring in information technologies. Closing in on 1,000 career points with Rutgers. Third in the country in blocks this season. Hyatt's got a dozen through the traffic and able to draw the foul. Rutgers has closed this deficit so for the Scarlet Knights at the strike as we get back. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. free throw miss it's going to go to Wake but Rutgers is within one possession after Hyatt hit a free throw 42 to 39 in what was once an 18 point game and now they can get their defense up and they become a lot more aggressive when they go to their full court defense Simpson went flying get no call Wolfric reached in Reed is a terrific passer. One of the things Rutgers does defensively, they take away your threes. They really do a good job taking away those looks. Here's the drive and dish that flows quickly on Hildreth. Miller has an open three. Offensive rebound to Reed, fresh 20. Excellent ball movement. Sacks from the outside. It always happens whenever you have an offensive rebound. It always see that's the easiest way to knock down a three. You get the defense in, tran in transition in a scramble mode. Simpson, no, tipped up, batted out to Davis. Rutgers really struggled rebounding the ball against Illinois last time out. Minus 28 on the glass. The Scarlet Knights in that game had 18 defensive rebounds. Illinois had 19 offensive rebounds as the Scarlet Knights get called for a foul. Wake does a great job of moving the basketball. 
Uh, they've got really good passers, and they step up and they knock down the three. And that's what they're going to have to wind up doing, being able to knock down some threes. And I think part of the reason Rutgers has gotten back is because of the fact they've limited Wake's offensive opportunity to shoot the three. Now Wake today just 5 of 19 from three. Hit a couple of threes early, not much since. Rutgers with the press. It's forcing Wake to operate. You see where they are? They are around half court. They're extending them offensively. Long down low, Lee finishes with two hands. And that's the dimensions for Reed that he brings to this Wake team because he can, we can isolate him one on one and he can finish plays. That's also the danger of pressing out and giving this offense space. Twist over Carr, knocked out of bounds by Wolfram. Great spacing right there. Reed uses his body and is able to finish at the rim. You see how he seals off the defender so he can finish, and there's no weak side help because they raised the weak side, and that's a shooter over there. Coach, I'm telling you, it's going to create conflict once Wake gets into the <laughs> ACC. You're going to press out on these shooters, respect these guards, and you're going to let you know, big number four work one-on-one -on -one with room down low. It's a, it's a dangerous gambit. Well, it is for the opponents, the one that Coach is really looking forward to uh, because this Wake team is really efficient offensively when they can get that low post scoring like that. Keller has we haven't come talked in about Reed. We haven't talked about Carr being able to pop up to the foul line and knock down threes there. That's a long two from Salas. And O'Neill couldn't corral the rebound from the fire. So Rutgers got to within three, and Wake has responded to lead back up to eight. You know, Rutgers has flowed in and out offensively as far as getting the ball into the paint area. They were very successful with it for a while, and they seem to have gone away from it the last couple of minutes. Foul on Austin Williams. I love when players are giving officials clinics on defense. You never did that as a coach? They never listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> they never listened. They just said, Perry, go to them. Keller, another offensive rebound. And he's able to draw the foul. Wake is not a team you want to put into the bonus, through the double bonus. They are an outstanding free throw shooting team, 80% as a squad. And that is the third team foul on Rutgers. And that is something that's against Rutgers' DNA. You know, they really like to take away what you like to run. They really like to not give you threes, and they really like not to put you on the foul line. Fredrickson catch and release. The freshman is one of Steve Forbes says is one of the best shooters he's ever signed. Eight unanswered by Wick. Fernandez blocked from behind. Rutgers has gone back to trying to space the floor and, and dribble drive to attack the defense. Fredrickson knocks down the three at one end, coming over the top on the other. Omori. Too strong. Rutgers has gone more than three minutes since its last basket. Wake gives it right back. Davis to Fernandez through the contact off the front rim. And he will get rewarded with two shots. But that's okay. That's the way Rutgers wants to play. They have to continue to attack like that. And uh, 
get to the foul line, and that's the way that they can cut this lead. They got them back in the ball game the first time. They can get back in it the same way. It's Keller's first. It's only the fifth foul that Wake has committed for the entire game. Tonight at 10, after our men's basketball doubleheader, the Nothing But Net crew breaks down the night in the ACC with highlights and analysis of all the men's games and a look ahead at the best games on the schedule in the coming week. It's right here on ACCN. Coach, I know we're going to be watching the game that follows us as well. Clemson and South Carolina, a couple of unbeaten teams and obviously big-time Palmetto State rivals. Well, it is, and that game means an awful lot there in the state, recruiting-wise and just pride. So it's going to be a really exciting game. Clemson is really playing well. The win over Pitt, I, I was really impressed because that's a really good Pittsburgh basketball team. Hill driven to three, the rainbow, a pot of gold, Marion a rebound, and Wake right now controlling the offensive glass. Salas from the outside, in and out, rebound snatched by Omori. Fernandez, machetes through the defense, and he's got two shots, the foul on Keller. Parker Fredrickson, the freshman from Bixby, Oklahoma. Knocking down the triple for the Deeks. Great spacing. They, they used the effort with the dunk right there. Then you have Fredrickson knocking down a three. They really do a good job of spacing the floor. And when they space it like that, it gives them more driving lanes, and they can also dump the ball into the low post. Steve Forbes' team, one of their Achilles heels was rebounding today. Plus six on the glass, more importantly, 13 offensive rebounds to Rutgers, seven, and coach a 16 to two edge in second half, a second chance points. Well, they've been really aggressive, and uh, would you say getting a guy eligible can have a little bit something to do with that now? I mean, because it just changes the whole dynamic of everything, I think, for this way for us team. It also feels like you're turning in what was a relative weakness in rebounding to now at worst, neutral, possibly a strength. Well, yeah, again, he's making them a physical team because yeah, because of his physicality, everybody else is stepping up. They you see Rutgers with their pressure, and that's one of the things that they do really well to try to control the tempo of the game. But that young man right there, it makes a huge difference in the way Wake Forest plays basketball. As he gets more and more comfortable with his new teammates, and when you look at the landscape of the ACC, and specifically the big men in the league this year, what sort of impact can Afton Reed have? Uh, uh, huge, because it, because of his physicality and because of his versatility. Uh, you know, he can play inside, he can play outside, he moves his feet real well, and Rutgers is knocking down another three right there. If, if, if Rutgers can shoot threes like that, they'll get back in this basketball game. They need their guards to step up and really start to attack the man. There you see a, a, a dribble drive, kicks it out, and that's where you can make some hay shooting the three. You've got to get some penetration. You have to attack the basket, collapse the defense, then move the basketball. Fernandez, after hitting the three, just picked up a second foul. Game of runs, and now it's Rutgers on a 7 0 run. Fernandez has 11 points. Ian Hyatt has led the way, and now that's two more. Give him 13. And this is the closest Rutgers has been since very early on. Fernandez loves to score the basketball. It's, it's nice to watch guys that like to score and can score. He plays with a fearlessness. Rutgers got a first-hand glimpse of that a few years ago at UMass at a game winning three against Rutgers. And now Steve Peichel says you can do that for us. <laughs> One of the things that Rutgers, they're not gonna, they're not gonna 
back away. I mean, they've been in these types of games before. Coach Piker has done a tremendous job there at Rutgers. Then this has got a long ways to go. This is not over right now. Well missed by Boopy Miller, 82 percent free throw shooter. And here comes Reed checking back in for Wake. You know, we talk about roles changing. You know, Miller's role now changes with Wake Forest because now he's got a legitimate low post player to throw the ball into. So now he's got to give, be able to do that and also get caught his shots because he's really been a factor throughout the course of the season. So, you know, as a point guard, he's got to recognize the weapons that he's got in his toolbox. And he's got to be able to disperse the basketball to make him effective. What's the adjustment you have to make as a coach? Because now you're also coaching a different version of your team. Well, I think a lot of it is done in film work. I think a lot of it is done in just how you game plan and take advantage of matchups, which has become even more important as the season goes on. The good news for Wake is Reed, while he was waiting for that NCAA waiver, was able to practice with the team. Marion against Griffiths, freshman on freshman. And he lost his pivot foot. See, sometimes what happens to freshmen, they get, they get too deep. And you can't get in a position to where you drive the basketball, take the ball so deep that you don't have an outlet or can't either finish at the rim or kick it to someone. That's my fear of the pool. <laughs> when you can't swim. <laughs> you don't want to go too deep. <laughs> Stay in the shallow end. Hernandez gets free. Launches. That would have tied it. Rutgers very rarely gives up easy baskets. They do a good job of getting back in transition. When I, when, when I talk to people, I ask, you know, a lot of times teams do that. They, they, don't, they don't send everybody to the glass. They get two, three guys back. But Rutgers will send guys to the glass, but it's just a point of emphasis by coach. You know, no matter what we do or what we run, we have to get back. You don't give up easy transition baskets. Meanwhile, Hildreth at the free throw line. He is 29 of 32 entering play. A Sunday, women's basketball doubleheader on ACCN. Florida Gulf Coast and Duke at noon, followed by Kentucky and Louisville. The fourth team and Deacons look to string back-to-back -back quality non-conference wins. Duke Florida last Wednesday. Up five now on Rutgers. Scarlet Knights. Their two losses this year to Princeton and Illinois. They have a win against Georgetown. And this is a game where the result impacts not just both teams, but both conferences late in the season. Williams on the drive. Another rebound by Reed. Almost had it taken away. Ten rebounds for Efton Reed. Miller, New Jersey traffic, able to draw the foul. And that's one of the things that Miller's able to do. He really is, is tough with the basketball. He's physical. You know, he's small size-wise, but he's able to get in the lane and finish there. And I just think that, you know, he's really has been the leader of this basketball team. And the way the guys have stepped up and kind of followed him has been something that Coach has kind of hung his hat on. Noah Fernandez picked up his third foul. Wake is in the bonus. It is going to be very important for Wake to finish this out defensively. They're going to have to lock in and be able to make some stops. So this Rutgers team is going to be very aggressive. I expect them to be driving the basketball a lot more as we go down. And that represents for Wake a growth opportunity. We know they can win with offense. And there's Reed showing off the defense, the block at the rim. 
Salas off the bounce. Drops it off for Reed. One more. Comes back to Miller, the three. He's great spacing on the floor. The ball never stopped. They move the ball around this late Forest team is very unstoppable. Defense to offense. You can set it to Mozart. Boopy Miller is third three. He's got 17. Wake entered play as the only team in the country with four players averaging better than 16 points per game. Carr today only has four, but there is now a fifth beetle in Winston-Salem, coach. I tell you what, Mr. Reed has stepped up and he's made his presence known. The rebounding the basketball being a factor and uh, it just gives him one more tool in the toolbox of offensively to be effective. Two points away from a double-double in his Geeks debut. Wake in the midst of an 8-0 run after Rutgers got with him two. Look for Rutgers to try to space the floor and dribble drive. It's Williams, he gets tied up down low and dribbles. That's the help defense from an Afton Reed. 7.41 to go in regulation. Lake Forest by 10. Thank Should be a good one that follows us. South Carolina at Clemson. Tigers, the number 24 team in the country, undefeated, as are the Gamecocks. That game follows us tonight here on ACCN. Wake saw their lead dwindle to two. The Deeks have never trailed in this game. They've led by as many as 18. And then they've used an 8-0 run to give them some cushion. For Rutgers, you, know, you mentioned it earlier. It's kind of been inconsistent. It comes and goes, the offense, in waves. And they haven't really been able to get over that hump and, and pull the even. Well, they have not. You know, they've gotten back. But defensively, I think this is where Rutgers has to step up and really make their stand. Down low to Reed. The double doesn't come. The tip in by Carr and the foul. <laughs> you know, we've been talking about this, but we just give them a different dynamic. I mean, normally you see Carr shooting three-point shots and floating around the perimeter. Now he's uh, he's underneath because Reed is collapsing the defense and he's weak side crashing and he's getting tip-ins. The whole dimension of how Wake has been able to play up to this point has changed and it's all because of Reed's presence in that low post. Fernandez picks up his fourth foul. You're right. That entire play is created because Hyatt, we saw him should I double? Should I go in? The moment he does, you leave the weak side open. And, and, and I just think that you know, this weight team is evolving, you know, and I think tonight is the first night of, of the evolution, but um, I like the chemistry. I like the way that they share the basketball, and uh, you know, they're going to be a tough out now. You got basically the balance of December to get comfortable playing live games with Efton Reed. And then conference play gets going really in earnest December 30th with Virginia Tech. Reed's defense on Amore has been stellar as well. Amore has just four points tonight. He's got to give it up. Hyatt contested three. Front rim. Battle for the board. Williams blocked. BP Miller accelerates the other way. Miller to the basket, count it, plus the foul. Big time drive that time by Miller, and that's the transition. You know, Wake is able to get easy baskets, and normally this Rutgers team does not give up easy baskets like that. Look at the aggressiveness going after the rebound block, and now on the push out, Miller is taking the ball, and he's attacking the rim, and he's able to finish. Rutgers just does not give up player. easy. Go ahead, coach. No, the Rutgers just doesn't give up easy baskets like that. And I talked to a lot of coaches about their program, and that's the one thing they said. They just don't give up easy baskets. And it's a lot of it has to do with this Wake Forest team. It was 50 
to 48 at one point. Wake to the 14 0 blitz. Hyatt's three, fills that one, comes to Miller. Ahead to Hildred, off at the rim. Hyatt has 13, only two in the second half. Rock for a boy, deflected Miller's hands are everywhere. I like the way this Wake Forest team can change defenses and now. You know, Salas goes to the point he's initiating. They take Miller off the ball. Help coming from Hyatt Coach with the addition of Efton Reed tonight. We have just seen a team go from a finesse team to one that can play now <laughs> both with finesse and with physicality. Without question. I mean, they can, they can disco, but they can also play a little <laughs> jazz. So, I mean, they, they, they are really versatile. And the thing is, I mean, they, you can tell this team likes playing together the way they share the basketball. They're very unselfish. Miller with a teardrop. As a coach, what are the signs you look for when you want to see unselfishness from your team? Sharing the basketball. That's first and foremost. Giving the ball up to a guy with an easier shot, congratulating your teammate, I mean, um, and playing defensively together. It is a Wake Forest avalanche, 16 unanswered, and the Dicks have regained an 18-point advantage. USAA? Yeah. They have awesome rates on coverage for our car, home, and stuff. She has a lot of stuff. Dad. A lot of cool stuff, honey. But USAA also has banking, credit cards, and loans. Plus advice and other perks. Only for emergencies. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and it's all in one spot. So we know she's all set because we've got USAA. USAA, more than you might think, for the military community and their families. Rutgers trailed by 18 in the first half. Got given two at 50 to 48. Since then, all Wake Forest, 16 unanswered by the Demon Deacons. Rutgers has got more than five minutes since its last basket. They've missed their last eight shots. Well, yeah, Hyatt carried them in the first half and really initiated that run. But they're playing with some, Rutgers is playing with some young people. I mean, Simpkins is going to step up and he's going to play well for him. Griffith is, is, is a freshman. He's a really, really good scorer. He, he struggled here in the second half. And so, but, you know, you expect this sometimes on the road. And then their defense has not turned into easy opportunities for Rutgers that, that they normally get. And so, you know, this is a learning experience, but this is a fine basketball team, and I'm telling you, if Wake can hold on, this win will mean a lot later on in the season because this Rutgers team is going to beat a lot of people. For ACC fans who haven't followed the Rutgers and the Steve Piper era, this is a team that really is in its best stretch in almost 40 years. They've been to the NCAA tournament two of the last three seasons. 500 or better in a rugged Big Ten in four straight seasons. They've had four straight winning seasons, something they have done in about 30 years. Hildreth on the drive gets blocked the coach. Oh, by the way, you might as well get your licks on Rutgers right now because we're, as of now, two of the top three recruits in the country are committed to the Scarlet Knights. Uh, let me, th their program is in really, really good shape. And that gentleman right there is one of the outstanding coaches in the, in, in the business, and he just does a great job, not just in developing his team, but also developing young men. He played his college ball, Steve Peichel did, at UConn, and his first year with the Huskies was Jim Calhoun's first year at UConn. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, now, now I can tell you he's got some stories. Anybody that played for Coach Calhoun, he is one of the finest coaches, but he he does not hide his feelings in a lot of things. So he, that leaves you with a lot of stories. All right, so now you got to give us your best Calhoun story. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, well, when I was at Miami, our football team had just won the national championship, and they were introducing them at halftime, and it took a little longer than what Cal Coach Calhoun wanted, and he was about to tell his team to go in there and interrupt their celebration. And I said, Jim, yeah, I'm not so sure those guys really want to interrupt the Miami football team and chase them off the basketball court. And he, and he deferred to, to uh, discretion. Discretion sometimes is a better... Done today. They've gotten everybody involved and it's made them a better basketball team. And you can tell the chemistry of the team when they look for their teammates to get easier shots. And that's exactly what Wake has done. See the ball never sticks. They move it to the open guy. Guys are shot ready because they're anticipating it. And it's been very, very effective for this Wake Forest team today. We have seen Steve Ford inject right back into this program as Griffith misses. Trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2017. And again, there's a lot of basketball to be played. There's conference play up ahead at the end of this month and obviously into the new year. But with Efton Reed back, Wake and Steve Ford got a huge piece to the jigsaw puzzle. And if Damari Monsanto can come back and just be a shooter, that's another weapon for this team, and the Demon Deacons become a very dangerous out in the ACC, and most likely in March as you look at the upcoming schedule for the Deeks. You talk about him just being a shooter. That's like telling a fat kid you got to like cake. I mean, he <laughs> loves to shoot the basketball now. I mean, he's got a big smile. He can't wait to get back and be a part of this. Just to clarify, he's not fat shaming. <laughs> Monsanto, one of the best shooters in the ACC, and you know, they were working on him becoming more of an all-around player, but again, the way this team is constructed, that guy's a microwave. He can heat up quickly, hoping to have him back at the end of the month or early in January. You know, the Wake Forest program historically has been to me a family type of program. I mean, Tim Duncan, you know, a family type of guy. I mean, he loved the environment there. Chris Paul loved the environment there, you know, and, and they've had a lot of, you know, really outstanding players that have gone to Wake, and it is a, and it's a family type of environment, and Coach Ford fits that, and it created this team and that kind of image where they're talented, but, they, but they're family-oriented, they play well together, they do the little things, they care about each other, and uh, he's just done a fantastic job there at Wake. Yeah, he has come in, 19 wins last year, 25 wins two seasons ago. They've won 23 conference games the last couple of years. Going to be out of bounds, John Miller. Good defense there by Jamaica Davis. Yeah, and again, we talk about this Rutgers team. They got a lot of young pieces, and you talked about what's coming. And uh, but the pieces that they have uh, is really good enough to play. Um, you know, have an opportunity to play you know, in the postseason. And uh, you know, this will be a learning experience for them, and uh, because they played against an awful good basketball team tonight. Davis gets the basket. They did, did get Cooper Miller with a foul earlier. Cooper Davis now have to. He said, I don't know. We're at that point in the game, right? Yeah, but referees always want guys to be friends, man. You can't compete against somebody for 40 minutes and then want to be their friend. I mean, you, you, you can't. You got to watch what you say. You got to have sportsmanship. But to get guys to try to be friends after. After you play against him for 40 minutes, is a very difficult job. And these officials are really fine officials that we have. We put that with the Green. 
Well, Rutgers team that came in giving up less than 60 a game. And giving up 71 now to Wake Forest. And Efton Reed, in his Wake Forest debut, offers a double-double. 10 points, 12 rebounds. And maybe more than anything, his defense on Omori was outstanding. Omori has not been a factor tonight. He is not in the physicality that he brought. And the other thing, I like the way it's affected Carr. I mean, you know, Carr has not been hunting threes. He's been in the post area. He's been offensive rebounding. He's been posting up. And so it's really changed his game. It's going to be interesting to see down the line how Carr's maturity and how they really work together because I think we're talking about two post guys that really have the ability to score. Yeah, before Reed, again, the struggle for Wake Forest had been on the glass. In the games that they had lost, their rebounding deficiency showed. Now, last time out against a very good Florida team, even though Florida was missing their starting center, the Gators had a lot of size, and Wake out-rebounded Florida by one. Tonight, plus nine on the glass against Rutgers, but more importantly, 15 offensive rebounds, and they've got a 21-6 edge in second chance points. And the other thing is, I mean, defensively, I, I think that this Wake Forest team has stepped up and played pretty well. I, you know, I, there's no question the game last year has been on their minds. It eats at you um, because Rutgers really dismantled them and took them out of everything that they wanted to run, and they were determined, you can see at the beginning of the game, to come in and execute offensively. Wake in this game never trailed. Turner was trolling from the outside. He's a terrific shooter. Only a second three of the season, but his reputation is as a sharp shooter. Retro freshman from Buffalo. This is the you know, coach is still coaching. I mean, you know, it, it, this, this is just December. He's still coaching. And there are going to be moments that they're going to have where he's going to explain to them, this is how you have to do things. This is you have to, the way you have to handle things. He's got a young bunch. And, but this is a really, really good move. For this. And they got to get back in action this weekend. They'll play Seton Hall in what is technically a neutral site game. At the Prudential Center, that's a big Jersey rivalry, Rutgers and Seton Hall. I tell you what, they'll be ready for that. And, and I can understand his love of defense having been around Jim Calhoun because, you know, those Connecticut teams were very, very good defensively. And you talk about rebuild that Jim Calhoun did at Connecticut that has continued to today is just amazing. Take whatever benchmark you want over the last 25, 30 years plus, and no one's got more titles than UConn. Uh, you know, and, and, and when Jim first got there, I mean, people didn't even know which stores were it was. And, and I mean, he just did an outstanding job with that great loving personality that he has. When you drive up there, you're going to the cow pasture. Just to give you an idea of how hard it would be to recruit to a place like that. He not only got good talent, he got great talent. And, and, and the loyalty that, that he created by all those that played for him, were on his staff and everything is just amazing. And his Hall of Fame induction, I mean, it, it was full of Connecticut people. Troll from the corner. You think of that first title in 99 with Khalid el -Amin and Dick Bosco. Rip Hamilton knocking off Duke in uh, one of the better championship games we've seen. Trajan Langdon fell down. This is a really good win for Wake, and uh, Coach Forbes has to feel really good. a three. He's got 23. His fourth three-pointer. Two points off the career high. And Wake Forest with an impressive effort at home tonight. They're tough to beat on this floor. The Demon Deacons with a 16th consecutive 
home win, 24th straight non-conference home win. And coach in their last 40 games at the Joel, they're about to be 35 and five. You know, I mentioned some of the Wake Forest greats. I gotta, I gotta name our own Randolph Childress because he was a very special beat. Somewhere that ACC tournament crossover <laughs> still lives. <laughs> Jeff Teague, another good one. Muggsy Bowles, I mean, you didn't put the ball on the floor around that guy. But I'm just telling you, this is a, Wake Forest has always been a very special place. And the people that have come and played here and the way the fans have treated their players with such respect, and it's just been a love affair. Cole launches, call the rebound, and that'll do it.